Welcome everyone to today's webinar, today's tea break webinar on our brand new Gantt template. Um, you might have already spotted the template in our template chooser. It's been there for a couple of days um, and so we thought it would make sense to use today's tea break to go through the new template, what it's for and how to create visualizations with it. Thank you to those who have joined and I'm just checking the chat if there are any issues, but it looks like we are ready to go. So I'm just going to get started. So in today's tea break, uh, by the way, hello, my name is Luisa. Um, I work in the Flourish support and content team. And uh, along with me today, I have uh, my colleagues, Mafe and, Hela and Anna, who is in the chat called Helena, so I got confused, um, who are here to help answer any questions that come up during the session. So I'll be going through the slides and sharing my screen and showing how to use um, Flourish and my colleagues will be here in the background to answer any questions. So please use the chat um, if anything comes up. In today's session, we're going to be looking at um, the Gantt template. It's a new template. I'm going to be talking about when to use it, what, what it's for, a couple of different use cases, and then we're going to jump into the editor and start creating our own. So we'll be formatting our data so that it works in the format that it needs to be, as well as customizing our Gantt. So we'll be looking at a couple of different customization options, um, coloring, dates, as well as pop-up panels, and some advanced dynamic content for those that might already be a bit more familiar with all things Flourish. Um, so let's get started. First of all, what is a Gantt chart? A Gantt chart is a type of a bar chart that is used to illustrate a project schedule. The classic use case is to lay out all of the tasks involved in a big project and share how those are shared across teams and categories. And you can see how tasks run in parallel, um, how they're dependent to each other, which ones are being completed, and what the progress is. Um, the chart type was developed by this fellow here in the bottom right, Henry Gantt, uh, around 1910, 1915, or between those years, um, for the purpose of production plans for factories and workshops. Our Gantt template works a little bit differently than those from Henry Gantt's days. Um, we have lots of added interactivity as well as pop-ups and panels. Um, so that's kind of the strength of the Flourish Gantt um, that I'll be demonstrating today. Modern Gantt templates also, or Gantt charts, they also show dependency relationships as well as the current schedule status and the progress. Um, next, we're going to look at the anatomy of a Gantt chart. So the different parts of the chart that will stay the same no matter what kind of Gantt you're creating. Um, basically, it's always a list of activities over a certain um, time scale. The time will run across the top or the bottom of your chart normally. So in this case, we can see the time scale is months from February until October in our example here. And then in the rows, we can see activity groups. And the activities themselves are showed as bars, which can be stacked if they're happening at the same time. And we have an activity bar that can be partially filled uh, to demonstrate the progress that has been made. So these are the types of um, the, the parts of the chart that you'll always find um, across Gantt charts and also available in our Gantt template. Um, while the original use case for Gantt charts is for project management, so tracking the progress of a project, it can also be used for other things such as, for example, a weekly timetable, as we see in this example, where we have a schedule from Monday to Friday with different courses and papers that are due. Or also, you might have come across one of these before, um, a timeline to show a band or even a company's member or employee history. Um, this one is from the Fairport Convention Band. Um, I found it on Wikipedia. There's quite a few of these and they're quite fun to look at. And now we can recreate them ourselves and flourish. We're going to look at a bit more of a, um, 
I guess, Ganti example um, from the project management world. Um, so I'm going to jump across to my data set now and take a look at that. So here in my data, which I've prepared in a Google Sheet, I have um, some typical data that you might want to visualize in a Gantt chart. Um, this is uh, data that has a start date, an end date, um, the task, which is being performed, a project which it is being assigned to, as well as three different teams that have kind of typed in their progress on the different tasks. Um, so we can see we have three different teams and um, of course each of the tasks uh, is being mostly done by one team at a time. Um, so we have three columns for teams. Now, if I want to get this into my Flourish Gantt chart, um, I would just start normally by just selecting all of my data with Control or Command A, um, copying it to my clipboard. So I just did Command C. I'm on a Mac. That would be Control C if you're on a Windows machine. And then I'm just going to jump straight across to my Flourish editor. This is my projects page. Once, once I log in, this is where I end up. And I'm going to click New Visualization. And this brings me to our template chooser page, which is where you can find a list of all the different um, templates that we have available. And I'm just going to scroll all the way down until I can find the Gantt chart. We have different starting points for our Gantt chart here. Um, so these are the ones that weren't here a couple of days ago, but um, you might have noticed that they appeared. Uh, we're always adding new templates to our template chooser, so it's always worth kind of scrolling up and down and seeing if anything has changed. Um, and each of these starting points is meant just as a, a blueprint, is what we call it, or a starting point to give you um, some example data so you can see what it's structured like, but also to show you a couple of different settings that you can use. So I'm going to use the project management starting point just because I have project management specific data, so that actually works quite well for me. But I could always start with the weekly timetable one and then work from that starting point to get elsewhere. So these are really not set in stone. You can kind of start with either. It's just um, they have different settings that will help you get to visualize what you're trying to visualize easier, depending on what they're set up for. Um, so in my starting point, I can see there's some sample data in here. Um, it's actually quite similar to what I'm visualizing, but of course I want to replace this with my own data as you would with your own data. So the first step is that you're going to switch from this preview tab into the data tab. And here you can see, oh, I'm being invited to test new Flourish features. You might see that as well. So do fill in our short survey if you're interested. We just set that up earlier today. Um, but for now, I'm going to focus on creating my Gantt chart. So the first step in my data tab is I can see the placeholder data, but I just want to get rid of all of this and clear it. So I'm going to hover or click on this data little arrow here and select clear sheet. And now I have a, a clear, cleared sheet and I'm just going to paste in my data by doing um, command V or control V. And now you can already see down here in the bottom right corner, our preview area is populating with the example of the chart. So now we're actually already visualizing our data and we can next select what exactly we want to visualize through our column bindings. I'm just quickly going to switch to the preview area so you can see what this looks like um, and back to the data tab so I can make some tweaks. So this is how you would start with any Flourish visualization. You can kind of clear the data, input your own data, and next we have to select the columns. Um, I'm just going to remove all of the columns that I don't need because actually only some of them are required for our Gantt template. So I just wanted to show you the starting point, which is the, that all you need is the start date and the end date. So you could create a Gantt with just the start and the end date, which has to be something that can be interpreted as a date. So um, all I need in this case are my A and B columns, but of course, if I want to add more information and context to my Gantt, then I can add additional column bindings. And I'm going to go through those now, but I'm just quickly gonna check my slides if I'm not forgetting anything. Um, okay, now that's all good. I'm just gonna jump back. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through the different column bindings now and show you uh, what they're for. 
So the first one that we can see here is task and task refers to the name of the task that you would like to display within the bars. So in this case, that would be the task itself, which um, I'm just, yeah, makes sense uh, going to bind to my task column. So if I switch back to the preview, I can already see now my bars have some labels in them. Next, you might want to define a grouping. Again, this is all optional. All you really need is the start and end date. Um, the grouping is kind of the, um, the y-axis that we saw in our starting point before. If we want to group these tasks into different teams, um, the grouping would be the place to do so. So in this example, I'm just going to input D as my grouping. And um, now we can see that we have this kind of y-axis with the different teams or groups of tasks. And finally, we also have a color binding. Um, I'm just going to group that by D as well for now, um, which is the same, so kind of the type, the group of the task. And finally, we have our progress option, which you can select optionally to show to what percentage a um, progress has been made on this task. Um, we use numbers from zero to one, one meaning 100% and zero meaning zero. So 0 0.7 is 70%, 0 0.3 is 30%, etc. cetera. Um, but now that I've selected my product team column for progress, I can already see that the progress is actually only showing in some of my bars. So now I have to come up with a way to show it in all of my bars. Um, because I can actually only select one column for progress here. So I'm just going to switch back to my slides real quick um, to quickly demonstrate the concept of unpivoting, which is what I'm going to be showing next to get all of my different progresses into the same column. So here we can see um, a wide format data with a year and then months in the column headers and values for each month. And what we want to get to is all of the months, or in our case, all of the teams combined into one column, and then all of the values or the progress combined into one column. And there's a nice um, feature within the data tab of Flourish that can help you to achieve this that not a lot of people know about. So I thought it could be a fun one to demo. Um, so what we basically want to do is to merge these three columns into one column. And to do that, you can just select them. So um, I'm just going to select one, hold down shift and select the other two, then right click, and then you can select combine columns and pivot. And what that is now going to do is it's going to select um, the items that are in the column headers and put them in their own column and then populate them with their values in another separate column. So if I select confirm, now we can see that we have one column for our team and one column for our value, which in this case is the progress on the task. Now, unfortunately, uh, you might've already noticed our bars have multiplied. Uh, the reason for that is that we also had a couple of empty progress values. Um, so the easiest way to clean this up is just to select this um, column, sort it from a to Z or Z to A, um, and then get rid of all the empty ones. And the reason for that is I just want to keep the ones that actually have made progress because I know from my previous format that all of them actually did um, for the tasks that were assigned to them. So I can just select again by holding down shift um, and then right clicking and selecting remove rows, keeping only the ones that had progress and now I can select my progress to be column F. And optionally, I might want to change my color column to be column E um, because I don't necessarily need to color it by exactly the same thing as it's already been grouped by because that would just be repeating the same information. So now if I switch back to my visualization, it looks a lot more like it looked um, in the starting point. Oh, I just heard something. No, maybe not. Um, and we have our progress, we have our groupings and our different colorings. So that is the kind of the data side of things and how you select those columns and how you could also reformat your data if you need to. And now I'm going to move on to actually customizing my Gantt chart through the available settings in the preview tab. So if I go back to my chart um, into the preview tab, which is here, this is where I make all the changes to the way that my chart looks. 
Um, the data tab is making the changes to the underlying data and what is used to visualize what, but the preview tab is used for the coloring and the labeling, et cetera. So um, I can see here, I have lots of available setting blocks. For example, I can maybe, um, I would like to have higher bars or um, rounder bars. Um, you can customize this all quite a lot. Um, in my labels, maybe I want to set my labels to be a bit bigger or smaller if they're not displaying the whole text by default. And I can make different styling options such as setting them to be bold. By default, you can see that um, we're using contrast coloring. So white is used on dark colors and dark or black is used on lighter colors. Um, but you can also always override that if you wanted them all to be white, for example. Um, and then in the colors, I can select my palette. Uh, if you have a company theme set up as part of a company account, this would already um, appear in your default themes. And I can just quickly show you what that might look like um, for, oh, oh dear. That was, I typed the wrong name of the theme. I'm just gonna select a different one. First with a dark, um, in this example, just to show what a theme can do to a visualization within one click, um, it can appear in your theme colors, um, but that's only available on business and enterprise accounts. So for now, I'm just gonna select it to show in our default theme again, um, but you can also use color overrides. So for example, if I wanted the content team to always be red, uh, I could select that here. And I can also use hex codes, not just, um, written out words here. The x-axis and y-axis settings are quite similar to our other templates. So if you've, you've used some of our other templates, you'll already um, be quite familiar with these. You can customize them quite a lot. For example, moving the axis to the bottom, um, switching the different settings, customizing the ticks um, into great detail, um, but also customizing things like the date and time formatting. So um, in this area here, under date and time parsing and formatting, you can, for example, select that you'd like to show a long month name instead of a short one, et cetera. And you can customize this quite a bit also in terms of locales, so different languages um, and different, different numerals. Um, you can also decide to display or hide your legend. In the legend settings, I might want to hide it. So I would just go into legend and set it to be disabled. And you can customize um, the kinds of things that display in your pop-ups. By default, it uses whatever you've bound to your columns in the data tab and shows those in, order, in the order that they've been bound. So if I hover here, I can see the different things that I've supplied. But you can also always override that by setting it to custom and then configuring what is written here um, using our curly bracket or handlebars notation. And I'll just give you a quick example of what I mean with that. Um, maybe I only want to have the name of the task and its progress in my pop-up and not all the other stuff. In that case, you can just switch back to the data tab, find the name of the task and use this double curly bracket or handlebars notation to write um, the name of the column, which in this case is task. And I'm going to do the same for the progress. Um, and in the main content area, just write my double curly brackets again, enter my progress. And now you can see that those are being pulled through as well. You can also customize the styling. So if you want the header to be inline or a block and the coloring, the alignment and so on and so forth. Um, there's really like endless customization availability in our pop-ups and panels. Um, and that's the last um, thing that I wanted to show in this demo. Um, I'm just quickly gonna switch back to my slides to see if I'm forgetting anything else. Um, yeah, so the next thing I want to show is pop-ups and panels and the kinds of things that you can do to customize those as that is, um, Another thing you might want to do with your dance visualization to, to make it even richer, add content and context to the process of your um, projects. For example, if you have um, a task and you want to click on it and then you could display um, links or even 
a link, um, an embedded visualization or an embedded document, etc. And I'll show you how to do that next. Um, oh, sorry, wrong screen. Uh, I'm just going to jump back to my projects page and um, grab my. Actually, I'm just going to use the same visualization that I already have here and show you how this works from scratch. So back in my data tab, <clears throat> I'm going to add a new column. Um, I just selected this, right clicked, and then selected insert column to the right. And now um, I might want to actually embed um, a document or a video or an image in my pop-up or panel. Um, in my case, I have this kind of brainstorming doc that we used uh, the other day to think about how we could make our help docs more visible. Um, this is created in Figma, but um, it could be created anywhere that kind of offers you um, the ability to create an iframe embed code. So the same goes for YouTube or um, Instagram, or yeah, you could link up anything that exists on the web basically. So I'm just gonna copy that embed code. And here under my um, team brainstorming, I'm just gonna input this. Uh, because this is what I'd like to show in my panel when someone clicks on this team brainstorming bar. And now I'm going to supply the name panel here and make my panel column available in my pop-ups and panels by supplying it in this column binding down here. And now if I switch back to my preview tab and go to my pop-ups and panel settings, I'm just going to configure it to use the panel um, and only a panel because I only want the panel for this demonstration. And I'm going to set it to be custom content. And then I'm going to pull through my panel here. Um, so it can be as easy as that, that you just paste an embed code um, and then pull through the name of that column. And I'm just going to give it the task as the title again by using our handlebars again for the task. And now if I set, click on team brainstorming, it should now pull through my um, whiteboard in Figma that I was just looking at before. And I might do the same uh, for YouTube video, um, or maybe not because I actually didn't prepare one. Uh, so it's fine. I'll just do it with this one um, and show you how to hide the panel content for the others. Because at the moment, if I have a panel embedded in one of my bars, uh, in one of my, if I have something embedded in one of my panels, but not in the others, and I don't kind of tell it to hide it in that case, uh, the panel will still pop up in any case, which doesn't make much sense if I don't have additional content here. And this works the same across all Flourish templates, by the way. So what I'm demonstrating now, you can also make use of in our map template, for example, or in our survey template. Um, so this is a generic generically useful information in terms of hiding pop-ups and panels where there is no information. And basically what you want to do is use some extra bit of handlebar syntax, which we can already, which we already saw in our slides here. And it's this if um, statement within our handlebars. So what you want to do is create more handlebars or more curly brackets, type hash if, then type the name of the column that you'd like um, things to display with. Um, and if there is no information in this panel, you don't want to display things. So you're basically saying, if there's something in this column, show this pop-up or panel. And if there's not, don't show it. So I'm just going to use the word panel again. So if panel, and then I'm just going to close my if statement with two curly brackets and then a closing if. And now if I click on this again, it should display my team brainstorming because I have content in my panel column. But if I click anywhere else, nothing happens because there's no additional content there. And that's being controlled through this if statement here. Um, so that's another kind of advanced Flourish feature that again works across different templates, um, is very useful, but not a lot of people know about. So I thought I would take the time to demo that one today. Um, and I'm just gonna jump back to my slides. I've linked a help doc on the topic as well. And I think Mafe might be sharing some information in the chat as well um, for additional reading on custom pop-ups and other help docs on the topic.
And to finish things off, we're already nearing the end of our time as um, our tea breaks are always quick 30 minute sessions to learn about something about Flourish. Uh, I'm just going to go through a couple of resources. I have a link to our Gantt help doc here. I'm just gonna jump over and show you in our blog, um, our latest blog post that we published on Friday. Um, walks through a few different examples and how to create them. So here we can see the same project management example that we just used. Um, we also have this nice Fleetwood Mac example using the kind of band timeline um, idea um, and then going through a, a few different examples of how you would like to, how you might want to customize the time um, and date formatting. And finally, some examples about pop-ups and panels. And I've also linked our overview help doc in the slide, uh, as well as our social media channels.